Hey there, welcome back to Be Hooked, the place where you and I turn yarn into anything we want, hobby or lifestyle. Now in today's episode, I'll share with you a brand new knitting pattern. We're gonna work it from start to finish. The full project, and you're gonna enjoy it this fall. Let's see how it's done. All right, so you're fired up and ready to go with this project. Before you dive into the tutorial though, head over to my website to find the written instructions and the full supplies list. To quickly overview the products that I'll be using for this project, I highly recommend them because, well, they work really well for this project. One of which is the yarn. I love Peyton's Alpaca Blend yarn and no, Yarn Inspirations is not requiring me to say that. I genuinely love this yarn. It comes in a lot of different colors and the texture is delicious. It's squishy, it's soft, and it's very warm, making it perfect for this project. Plus it has great stitch definition so you can see the double moss stitch pattern really well. You'll also notice that I'm using a brand new, really fresh and shiny new knitting needle set. This is the Clover Takumi knitting needle set. I love this. It smells amazing too. So as you can see, you get this really cool kit. It comes with a variety of different needle sizes that have screws on the end so that you can attach your cords. So your cords come in this little pouch. It's, it has everything you need. It's so simple and easy. And this is a zippered case that makes me look professional and clean. And I love it. Now keep in mind that when you're working with circular knitting needles, which yes, you do need to do for this pattern, it's easier than you might think. So don't run for the hills if you've never tried circular needles before. The, the 16 inch, that length that we're going for is actually from tip to tip. For an adult sized hat, the, the size hat that we're working with here, we need to use that specific cord size. Clover Takumi also comes in double pointed needles so you can grab your six millimeter and be fired up and ready to go to work this pattern just as though you would see it here in the tutorial. The only difference here is the cord. The first thing we need to do to get started on our hat is cast on. So I like to use the long tail cast on for this particular pattern. I think it works really well and it's very beginner friendly. So what I'll do is I'll take this tail or just the end of my yarn and wrap it around the needle 10 times. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Pinch that off with your fingers and then you can let it go. And this is about how much yarn you need for 10 stitches. So we're gonna cast on 80 for this particular pattern. And so what I'll do is just fold it eight times. So that's how much yarn I need for 20 stitches. Fold it again for 30. Wrap it eight times so you're sure that we have enough for 80 stitches. Now once I have that wrapped eight times, just for good measure, I'm gonna get a little bit more, just to be on the safe side. Now this is our starting point. This is my long tail, and this of course is coming from my ball of yarn. Now take your needle and just allow that yarn to loop over it. Steady it with your finger gather it up in your hand just like that. Now swing your needle around, grab the loop on your thumb, swing it back, grab the loop on your finger, and then release the thumb strand over the tip of the needle. That's the long tail cast on. Now each one of these loops is of course a stitch that we've casted on. So you can see I have four here. Our goal is to cast on 80 stitches. We do need to make sure that we're using that specific number because with this hat and this pattern, we do need to work within a certain multiple. And that means we have to have a certain number of stitches in order for our pattern to be complete. So that cast on wasn't too hard, right? Go ahead and work up that cast on Make sure you double check and count your stitches at the end. Learn from my mistakes. 
you always miscount at least one stitch. So count your cast on stitches and then next we'll see how to join. So after you've cast on 80 stitches and you were really good and diligent and you counted to make sure that you have 80, we're ready to join so that we can start knitting in the round. It's so much easier than what you might think. Now you want to situate your work so that your tail and your working yarn are in this hand. And you also want to stretch it out so that your stitches here are close to the tip of the needle. The other thing you want to make sure is that this braid here, basically at the bottom of the cast on, is not twisted. So I like to situate it so that it's all in the middle of this loop. Now once you have all of those things in place, grab your working yarn and we'll start off our first row. Now technically before we can do that, what I recommend doing is grabbing a stitch marker. This is just a ringed stitch marker, it slips right over the tip of my needle, and that lets me know that this next stitch is my first one for the next round. So get your stitch marker in place, and we'll knit the first stitch. So insert your needle from front to back, then wrap your working yarn, and knit it off. Now for the brim or the bottom of our hat, we're going to work with a one by one rib. That means we're going to knit one, purl one, and repeat. So we've done our first knit, now we need to purl. So I'll bring the working yarn in front, and then to purl, instead of going from front to back like I did before, I'll go from back to front. Then you'll wrap the working yarn around the tip of the needle and purl it off. Now we want to knit the next stitch, so we need to pull the working yarn in the back. And if you give it a nice little extra tug there to take up the slack, you'll have a neater stitch pattern. Now we'll knit the next stitch. Bring the yarn in forward, and then we'll purl. Bring the yarn to the back and knit the next stitch. Bring the yarn forward and purl. So this is our stitch pattern for the next two inches of our hat. We're just gonna work with a one by one rib. But since we're on the first row here, I really want you to get a handle on how this stitch comes together. So go ahead and knit one, purl one, continue this repeat until you get back around to your stitch marker. And when you get to your very last stitch, if you've been doing everything correctly, you should end up with a purl here. So you'll purl your last stitch to finish it off. Now one other little thing that you can clearly see right here is sometimes in that join we have a nice big gap. Well one thing you can do is just pull on your tail. That's immediately going to tighten up that very last stitch. But if you still have a little bit of a gap or an opening there, I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's going to close up as you continue knitting, but then when we weave this tail in, we can also make any corrections there. So we're here at the end of our row. The first thing I want to do is set myself up to knit. So I'll pull the yarn in back and then transfer my stitch marker over. That tells me, okay, I'm on round number two. So our stitch pattern for the next several rows is going to be knit one, purl one, and repeat. So I'm knitting the knits and purling the purls. That's another way to think about it. Now just in case you get distracted and you have to figure out where you are, it's really helpful to know what a knit looks like and what a purl looks like just in case you do get distracted. So looking at it right here, if you look at it one stitch at a time, you can see that there's a distinctive difference between this stitch and this stitch, this stitch, this stitch, and so on. So whenever you see a stitch that looks like this, sometimes you can sort of see a V as you get more rows, you'll be able to see that a little more. That's a knit. So we want to knit that stitch. Now the next one has that little bar around it. That is a purl stitch. That's characteristic to a purl. So whenever you see that for this pattern, we're going to purl that stitch. Now looking at the next one, that tells me I can knit this stitch. Pull the yarn in front because I see that bar there, so I can purl this one. 
So those are just some visual cues. They'll take a little bit of practice to get used to them, but eventually you, you'll get to the point where you can just look at your knitting and you know exactly what you need to do. So now you have a pretty good handle on the ribbing pattern. The, the rib or the band is gonna make up the bottom about two inches of the hat. We'll work that repeat just as we saw it. When we meet back up, I'll share the repeat for the double moss stitch. That's going to be the second part of our hat. So here's what our hat looks like after we've knit a few rows and knit one purl one. This is going to be the band or the ribbed bottom of the hat. So now we're ready to move into the double moss stitch pattern. And I think you'll be delighted to learn that the first two rows in this repeat is exactly what we've been doing for our band. So right now, this measures two inches from my cast on edge to the top of my needle. Okay, so measure that out. It should be two inches, and then we're ready to start on that double moss stitch pattern. So I'll pass my stitch marker over, and because row one and row two of the double moss stitch are the same that we've been creating so far, I'm just gonna knit one and purl one and repeat that all the way around. So keep track of where you are at this point. We're working on row one of the repeat or round one of the repeat. And then we're gonna move into round number two straight away, just right after that, knit one, purl one, and repeat. And once you have those two rows completed, then we'll have a look at what to do for rows three and four of this repeat. Once you've completed those two rounds, our hat looks something like this. We shouldn't see a change from the band to the last two rows that we just made. Here's where the change happens. Now, until this point, we've been used to doing knit one, purl one in that specific order. Well, we're not technically changing those two stitches, but we are changing the order in which we're making them. So pass your stitch marker over. And rather than knit the first stitch, we're going to purl it. Then the next stitch we'll knit. And that's our repeat. Purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one. Now we'll continue this repeat for round three and round four. The, these are the last two rounds in our stitch pattern for the double moss stitch. So from there, We'll talk about the repeat and what to do next. But for now, go ahead and knit up round three and four, purl one, knit one, and repeat. I know it seems like a lot when we're trying to juggle four different rounds and keeping track of that and figuring out our stitches and what we've done and what we haven't done. Just remember that the double moss stitch, although it is a four row repeat, it's a pretty simple repeat at that. So rounds one and two, just to recap again, we start with a knit followed by a purl, and then we repeat for both of those rows, no matter what. Then for rounds three and four, we start with a purl followed by a knit, and then we repeat. And that's it, it's pretty simple. We're gonna work those four rounds until our work measures approximately four and a half inches, and then we're gonna tackle a color change. But don't worry, it's so much easier than what you probably thought. I know the first time I tackled color changes and knitting, I was just like, what? How do I do that? I don't even get that. I can't even wrap my brain around it until I watch somebody do it. And I was like, wow, that's so easy. Let me show you how to do it. All right, so at this point, I've just completed through round number four, which is where I purled one, knit one, and repeated. So I'm ready to start over on my stitch pattern repeat. Also, it measures about four and a half inches from my cast on edge to where my needles are right there. And the next thing I wanna do is change colors. Now, are you ready for how easy this is? So take your next color and fold it down. Give yourself about five to six inches. We wanna have enough that we can weave that in later and just kind of let that sit there. Now, the first thing I need to do is pass my stitch marker over. So since my first stitch needs to be a knit, I'll go ahead and insert my needle knit-wise, but instead of wrapping with color A, I'll drop that, pick up my little loop that I made, and place that on my needle, and use that new strand to knit. 
And from here, the rest of it's the same. When you drop this, make sure you pick up the working yarn and not the tail. You won't get very far if you start knitting with the tail. Then my next stitch, I'll need to purl. So I'll go ahead and purl the next stitch with the new color. Get a couple stitches here on my needle so things are nice and set. Then we can go ahead and trim color A. So just to make things a little bit easier, you can trim it about the same length there as our new color. And also, just to make my life a little bit easier, I like to knot these two together just to hold them in place. Now, what we want to do is finish knitting all the way around. We'll do one little thing different at the end of the round to help make up for any color jog or kind of like a visible step because we've changed colors right here. So knit yourself around to the end of the round using our familiar stitch pattern and we'll meet back up at the end. Okay, so I've made it back to the end of my first round where I did my color transition. What I want to do is of course pass my stitch marker over and I mentioned we were gonna do something a little bit different at the end of the round to help correct our color jog. Grab that bar right here and place it on your needle. Now our next row or our next round, we're going to knit one, purl one, repeat because this is row two. And so what I wanna do is knit that first stitch, but then that bar, knit those together. And that's going to help correct this color jog. See, I told you it wasn't that hard. We've tackled that color change and now we're gonna work on another section of our hat. We're not decreasing just yet, so don't run for the hills right now. Go ahead and work through that familiar moss stitch repeat, and then we'll tackle the decreases. So I've knit up my hat and it now measures about six and a half inches from my cast on edge with this new color B. And now we're ready to start on the decreases. Now keep in mind that our decreasing repeat is going to be over two rows. So we're gonna decrease on one round and then we're gonna not decrease on the next round and then follow up with a decrease again. So keep that in mind. You'll want to keep track of that as best you can. So because we're working on circular needles, as we decrease, eventually we'll get to the point where all of these stitches will not fit around the 16 inch circle. So because of that, we'll have to switch to double pointed needles. So much easier though than you might actually think. So for now, we're pretty good to go. See how the hat is much bigger than the actual circumference of our needles. So we can go ahead and decrease our first round and stay on our comfy circular needles. So I'll just pass my stitch marker over and I'll follow along with my same stitch pattern. So you can see I've got two knits here. So that means I need to go ahead and purl. So I'm making that transition. and then knit. The target here is to work through six stitches and then we'll do the decrease. So that's my second. This is the third. Fourth. Fifth. And sixth. Now, the next one, I want to knit two together. So just grab those two stitches. It's a little bit difficult maybe sometimes to get your needle in there, but try to get it through both of those loops and then knit it off. And then I wanna continue with my stitch pattern. So I've got two knits here. That means I want to purl the next one and I'll work through six. So this is the first. This is two, six, and now knit two together. And that is our repeat for this round. All right, so once you make it all the way back around, if you've done everything correctly, then you should end with a knit two together for your last two stitches. Okay, so we'll move on to the second round of our decrease. And for this one, we're actually not decreasing. 
So go ahead and pass your stitch marker over and then we should pick up with the similar, just our standard stitch pattern for that double moss stitch. So my first stitch is a purl, so I'm gonna purl that stitch All right, so here I've worked a few of my stitches, and because we have some of those knit two togethers from the previous round, it does throw off our multiple, and it's gonna throw off our pattern just a tiny bit, but it's something we have to work through. So whenever you come to one of your knit twos together, you're going to knit that. No matter what the next stitch is in your sequence, you're going to knit the knit twos together, and then continue with your stitch pattern. So what I mean by that is I've worked through a few of my stitches here. I have a purl, I have a knit, and technically next I'm supposed to purl, but this is my knit two together. I wanna make sure I knit that knit two together. Then my next stitch is a purl, so I'll go ahead and purl that, and then just continue on as if nothing were different. Okay, so we've just finished up round number two of the crown, and we're ready to move on to round number three. So this third round is another decreasing round and the techniques are the same. We wanna maintain our stitch pattern. So I've already worked two rounds of my purl one, knit one stitch pattern and then I'm just gonna flip that. So we're keeping track of two different stitch repeats here. So hang with me. I'll go ahead and pass my stitch marker over. Notice that my first stitch here is a purl. So that means I want to knit it because I'm making that transition. The other thing to keep in mind is that this time we're gonna work five stitches in between those decreases, those knit two together. So find that first stitch, I'm gonna knit it, then I'm going to purl, this is stitch number two. Stitch number three. Number four and number five. So then the next two, I will knit them together. And that is the repeat for this round. Okay, so I've just finished up round number four of the crown decreases, and just in looking at my stitches and how much slack I have here, looks like I can do about one more round before I need to switch to those double pointed needles. So moving on to round number five of the crown, we're not going to decrease this round and the repeat is pretty familiar. So I'll pass that over and I'm reading my knitting here to kind of help me as I go. But of course we have to deal with those knit two togethers and do a little something different for that part of the repeat. So my next stitch here is a knit and I'm in the middle of that repeat. So I wanna knit that stitch and then purl the next. Then knit one. And when I come to my knit two together, and I know that because it kind of looks like a V there, I'll go ahead and knit that stitch as well. So I'm always knitting the knit two together. And then I follow with my stitch pattern. So the next stitch here is a knit. So I'll go ahead and knit, and that's actually where the stitch pattern repeat begins. So knit one, purl one, Knit one, purl one, knit one, then knit the knit two together. Okay, so don't worry if you're if you're a little bit lost here. You can find all of this on the written instructions. I want you to use that as a supplement to this tutorial so that you can learn how to read a pattern and not just see it here on screen. So go ahead and finish up round five of the crown. When we meet back up, we'll talk about transitioning to those double pointed needles. Okay, so I've just finished knitting round four of my crown. We're ready to pick up on round number five here. But before we do, we need to get our DPNs ready, our double pointed needles. Now I'm using the same size that I have for my circular, so six and a half millimeter. Whatever size you had to use to obtain the gauge, make sure you're using that size double pointed needle. Now rather than just putting them all on at once, I like to save a little bit of time if I can. So I'm just going to use one of the DPNs to work some of my stitches 
as I go around. And that way I'm, I'm basically working it off of my circular and onto my double pointed needles. Okay, so looking at my stitch pattern here, I need to purl the first stitch. I'm gonna do that with my circular just because I want to keep my stitch marker in place. So I'll go ahead and purl this first stitch. And then I'm gonna start using my double pointed needle and we'll come back to this later. The next stitch I need to knit. So insert your double pointed needle knit wise, grab that working yarn and I'm going to situate it in the back, but I'm knitting it on that double pointed needle instead of the circular. Okay, so then once we get that out of the way, we can just sort of shove that needle towards the back and then we've got the two that we need to work on. So for this stitch repeat, we're decreasing on this round. That means we need to work four stitches before we get to our decrease. So we've worked two already. The next stitch I want to purl. That's the third and then I'll knit the fourth and then knit two together. I'll go through that one more time. Next stitch here, I need to purl. That is a three. So I'll knit the next one and then knit two together. For this particular pattern, I like to work about 12 stitches per double pointed needle. That'll make things pretty even. So, we have so this is your repeat for this round. Go ahead and finish up the stitch pattern repeat and don't forget to switch to a new double pointed needle every time you get about 12 stitches on one of these needles. Okay, so I've made it back around to the end of round five and I know you're probably thinking this looks like a confusing mess. Well, it's not too bad. So we have our first stitch and we have our stitch marker here that's left on our circular needle. Okay, so I can go ahead and just remove this stitch marker for now. The good news is that we're just gonna work from knits from here on out. We're gonna do a lot of decreasing over the next couple of rounds to finish off our hat. So because we're working with knits and I know this is my first stitch because my stitch marker was there, I wanna insert my empty double pointed needle knit wise Reach back here and grab your working yarn. And then you'll knit the first stitch. Then we can remove our circulars. We're completely done with those for now. And then before you move on, grab that locking stitch marker and place it on this stitch. That way we'll know that this is the beginning of the round. So if you've been seeing a pattern here, you'll probably guess that when we decrease on this round, we're gonna work three stitches before we knit two together. So again, I'm just working with knits. I've got my first one here. So I'll knit two more. And then knit two together. Then knit three, knit two together. Now when you're ready to transition to a new needle, just go ahead and slide the stitches somewhere in the middle of this needle. That way you're sure they don't fall off and then rotate it. Now where I am in my repeat, I need to knit the next two stitches together. So just slide the stitches down I'll insert my new empty DPN into that stitch. Grab the working yarn. This is always the confusing part. I pull that needle forward just so I can knit this stitch. And then once I have it like that, I tend to like to push it back out of the way. So sometimes that means sliding the stitches down just so I can get that working yarn out of the way. DPNs are really, it's just practice. They aren't really easy for anybody to work with, but you do get used to it. You will get the hang of it. 
So I've just finished round number six. I have just a little bit here left to go. On round seven of the crown, what we want to do this time is knit two and then knit two together. So because this is my first stitch of the round, I'll go ahead and remove that for just a moment. Insert my new empty needle knit wise. Again, just scoot that guy out of the way so that I can knit that first stitch and then replace your stitch marker on that first stitch. So that was my first stitch of the round. I'll knit one more and then knit two together. That's your repeat for this round. So now that we've finished round number seven, we have just a few stitches remaining. Here's the good news. We're gonna finish up with a drawstring bind off. So go ahead and grab your working yarn and make sure it's nice and long. Grab just a couple of feet there. Off, and then grab a darning needle and thread this tail on your darning needle. And we want to work in the same order, so we're still going around in the same direction. So starting with where your stitch marker is, that is our first stitch. So we can remove that marker and then we'll just grab that stitch. Now I'm gonna insert my needle knitwise. That's gonna make sure it twists in the proper way. So we'll just pull that through. And then once it's through, you can slide it off the needle. And we'll just keep going like that. Now when you get to your last stitch, you'll just thread it through, remove that DPN, and then all we need to do is give it a nice pull. Now we do want to be careful on how tight we're pulling, especially if we unplied our roving yarn here. What makes roving yarn strong is when it's twisted. But if you start untwisting it and then you pull on it, you can very easily pull it apart. So just be careful of that as you're pulling. Make sure that it's twisted before you do. And then I'll just go around the circle here with my darning needle. I'm just reinforcing this closure. All right, so once you're sure it's nice and secure, then just go ahead and take it, take the needle and go right down the middle. And then just reinforce it a little bit more here on the inside. Same way, just working around those stitches around the circle. And once you're sure it's nice and secure, we can go ahead and trim it off. And we're just about finished. We have a couple of ends to weave in, but just so you can see how that looks once it's finished, it should look pretty cool up at the top. We still have our stitch pattern, but then we've got a little bit of kind of bunchiness, we'll call it. I'm gonna make that word up here. So it's, all right, so to weave in those ends, just flip it over on the wrong side here. This was where my knot was. I'm just gonna pull those a little tighter. And because ideally hats stretch on the horizontal, so it's gonna stretch this way, I want to make sure that I'm weaving this in on the vertical. Because if I go horizontal with it and it stretches, well then eventually it's gonna work itself out. So I'll weave these in vertically, and I just like to wrap it around my stitches. So whenever I have a knit, I'll wrap it around that. I'm just kind of going through a purl right now. I've got two knits here, so I'll just kind of circle it around those two stitches so I can catch that. And then go back in the other direction. Now, once you're sure that's nice and secure, you can go ahead and trim it off. I am so excited for you, you finished one of your first hats, I'm sure. You followed this tutorial all the way through. You're here at the end. 
and I just wanna give you a virtual fist bump because you did it, it's awesome. Now, I would love to know who you're making this for. Tell me in the comments section below, are you making it for yourself? Are you making it for a friend? Also, side note, these are great gift ideas. They work up pretty fast, right? They come in a large array of colors if you're using Peyton's Alpaca Blend yarn, and they're glorious. I know you love them. So tell me who you're making it for in the comments section below. And one more thing before you go, please subscribe to the Be Hooked YouTube channel. If you loved what you see here, you'll see many more videos like this in the future, crochet related, knit related, and bottom line, just trying to help you achieve your goals to advance your skills, and yes, to turn yarn into anything that you want.